In this lecture, we'll learn how the Milky Way is a cosmic recycler and where stars tend to form in our galaxy. The main reason Earth and all of us are here at all is because the Milky Way is one big stardust recycling machine. Stars create heavy elements, die, and then release those elements in the disk of the Milky Way. New stars form from the material of old stars. We call this elegant system of galactic recycling the star-gas-star cycle. All stars return much of their original mass to interstellar space via the stellar winds, as well as at the end of their lives. This photo shows a bubble of hot ionized gas blown by the wind of a hot star near its center. That bubble is about 10 light years in diameter. High mass stars lose mass much more dynamically and explosively than low mass stars. Their stellar winds are stronger and supernova explosions are more powerful than planetary nebulae. Supernovae in particular create bubbles that can have a dramatic effect on the interstellar medium. Fast moving walls of high pressure gas called shock fronts sweep up surrounding material and create enormous bubbles of hot gas. Hot bubbles in the distance are easy to spot with X-ray telescopes. However, the nearest bubble is not so obvious because we're living inside of it. X-ray observations show that our local solar neighborhood is surrounded in all directions by hot X-ray emitting gas. Astronomers conclude that we live within a local bubble in which one or more supernovae must have been detonated during the past several million years. The hot ionized gas and bubbles created by supernova are dynamic and widespread, but represent a relatively small fraction of the gas in the Milky Way. Most of the gas is cool enough that hydrogen atoms remain neutral rather than being ionized. We refer to this gas as atomic hydrogen. We can see the distribution of atomic hydrogen gas in the Milky Way with radio observations. Atomic hydrogen emits a spectral line with a wavelength of 21 centimeters. We see the radio emission from the 21 centimeter line coming from all directions, telling us that atomic hydrogen gas is distributed throughout the galactic disk. As the temperature drops further in the center of a cool cloud of atomic hydrogen, hydrogen atoms combine into molecules, making a molecular cloud. We learned earlier that large molecular clouds fragment and give birth to clusters of stars. This is an image of a portion of the Carina Nebula. The dark blobs of gas are molecular clouds and stars are currently forming in the densest parts of these clouds. The most massive stars now forming in the Carina Nebula will explode within a few million years, filling the region with bubbles of hot gas and newly formed elements. The expanding bubbles will slow and cool as their gas merges with the widespread hydrogen gas in the galaxy. Further in the future, this gas will cool more and coalesce into molecular clouds, forming new stars and planets, which might someday be the home of new civilizations. Different regions of the galaxy are in different stages of the star-gas star cycle. Because the cycle proceeds over such a long period of time, each stage appears to us as a snapshot. We therefore see the interstellar medium as a wide variety of manifestations, ranging from the tenuous million degree gas bubbles to the cold, dense gas of molecular clouds. We can see how different states of gas are arranged in our galaxy by observing the galaxy in many different wavelengths. The stargas star cycle has operated continuously since the Milky Way's birth, yet new stars are not spread evenly across the galaxy. Wherever we see hot, massive stars, we know that we have spotted a region of active star formation. Because these stars live fast and die young, they never get a chance to move very far from their birthplaces. They therefore signal the presence of star clusters in which lower mass stars are still forming. Near hot stars, we often find colorful, wispy ionization nebulae. These nebulae glow because ultraviolet photons from the hot 
hot stars can ionize the nebulous atoms or raise their electrons to high energy levels, and the atoms emit light as the electrons return to lower energy levels. The Orion Nebula, shown here, is one of the most famous of these nebulae. At about 1,500 light years away, it is one of the closest regions of star formation. The colors of the nebulae come from spectral lines produced by particular atomic transitions. For example, a red photon is produced by the transition in which an electron falls from energy level 3 to energy level 2 in a hydrogen atom. Ionization nebulae appear predominantly red in photographs because of all of the red photons released by this particular transition. It's the disk of the Milky Way that is home to molecular clouds and numerous clusters of young, bright blue stars surrounded by ionization nebulae. Therefore, we can infer that star formation takes place in the disk of our galaxy, not the halo. The spiral arms essentially are waves of star formation. Looking at a spiral galaxy, it would appear that the galaxy should wind itself up over time. To see why it doesn't, we need to understand how the stars in the disk orbit. Theoretical models indicate that spiral density waves are responsible for the spiral arms. An analogy is a slow moving truck on the beltway. Cars approaching the truck slow down and bunch together. After the cars pass the truck, they speed up and spread out again. There are always some cars bunched up behind the truck, even though the cars themselves are gradually flowing past it. In a spiral density wave, gravity plays the role of the truck and stars and gas clouds play the role of the cars. The stars and gas are constantly flowing through the spiral arms, but the extra density of matter in the spiral arms alters that flow. They are temporarily slowed down, and the temporary slowdown produces a long-lasting pattern. In the areas of increased density, the squeezing can trigger star formation. Once a gravitational tug sets a spiral density wave in motion, the wave will continue to move through the galaxy's disk, perhaps for billions of years. To sum up, spiral arms are the sites of star formation because gravity bunches interstellar gas clouds more tightly there than anywhere else in the galaxy's disk. Collisions between these gas clouds compress the gas inside, increasing the strength of gravity in the cloud and triggering star formation. That's all for now. I will talk to you more about the Milky Way very soon.